Hello and welcome back. In this part of the chapter, we will be learning about conserving resources. I will be explaining it to you and discussing it with you that why it is important. Why is it important to conserve resources? What do we mean when we say that we have to conserve resources? And what are the important steps that we can take in order to ensure a sustainable growth of everybody around us and in order to conserve resources? Let's get started. Now, resource conservation is a technique, you can say, or uh, it is a way uh, that you use the resources. Basically, you have to be very, very uh, observant by uh, observant in how you're using the resources. You have to be very careful. You have to be very vigilant. Means you have to be very aware, okay, about the kind of resource that you're using, okay, and um, uh, means whether you're using a renewable resource, whether you're using a non-renewable resource and even if it is a renewable resource, like I explained you that even though you're using uh, drinking water, so you have to be very careful that you should not waste water because there are many people uh, also uh, mostly there in the rural areas that people are not getting the access to clean drinking water. Okay, and there are also certain urban areas where have where, where they have very uh, strict uh, uh, duration of hours that you in these hours you will get the supply of uh, water and from uh, say from say from uh, uh, from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. you'll get the supply of water and then again the water will be supplied to you uh, by 5 p.m. and uh, during those five hours you have to preserve water okay in in certain uh, uh, tanks in certain buckets okay so you have to be very careful in order to not to waste resources okay be it water be it uh, soil, be it any other resource that you might be using, that you know that uh, there is uh, there is uh, an extent to how and how much you can use these resources. Means that resources can get uh, exhausted over a period of time, especially when we are talking about non-renewable resources like coal, like petroleum. So, for example, you might have uh, observed this that in a in a traffic Okay, but in, in, at a red light, in, in a traffic juncture at a red light, um, there are some people who switch off, turn off their engine and there are certain people who let the engine uh, be turned on. Okay, uh, so what is happening in those cases? The petrol is getting consumed needlessly. Okay, and uh, there are certain people who turn off the engine so that uh, the system could also, the car could also, you know, cool down and there is no needless wastage of petrol. Because petrol, ultimately, you're getting it from petroleum. Petroleum is a non-renewable resource. And it means that it is not available for our use extensively. Okay, there will come a time where all of the petrol or all of the natural uh, non-renewable resources will get consumed, will get exhausted. Then how will, uh, what uh, will be the alternate sources for us? Okay, till now we have not come or thought of a very viable use of uh, alternate use of petrol. Yes, there are natural gases that are used as, uh, you know, alternate sources of petrol. But then again, this, it is very questionable. Okay, so you have to be careful. You have to be vigilant. You have to take important measures. Okay, you have to ensure that you're not wasting these resources. And how can you ensure that? You can ensure it that you can uh, buy that by reducing consumption. So, uh, for example, if you brush your teeth, okay, and um, when you when you have taken the sufficient amount of water to you know uh, uh, to run over your brush or to you know uh, urinate your mouth, and while you're brushing your teeth, you make sure that you're closing the tap so that water is not getting wasted needlessly, okay? Because the amount of water that you are saving here, you may think that it's very uh, it's very uh, negligible in amount, but if you think of all those people. Who are getting, who are thirsty? All of these, all of those people who are starving. So, for example, people who uh, they do not just waste water. Some people also waste food. Okay, but think of all these people who are starving. All those homeless people who are are not getting the access to clean drinking water and all the food. Okay, so uh, by doing your bit, okay, by doing your small bit, e even though it seems very negligible to you, you are actually, you know, you are actually. Um, participating in a cycle that is helping all those needy people one place at one time or the other at one place or the other so you have to ensure that you are reducing the consumption only use that amount that is sufficient for you to use then you may you may turn off the tap if you're if, you, if you're talking about water you may give it to some other people if you do not want to waste food or you may only take certain uh, uh, you know uh, things for yourself that is 
sufficient for your own use. Again, when we talk about plastics, recycling and reusing things, the most common example that you can think of is plastic. So plastic, you know, is a very important contaminant. Why? Because uh, certain um, uh, certain resources, they uh, certain uh, items, certain things, they are getting, uh, you know, uh, um, degenerated or they are acted upon by bacteria so that they get uh, broken down into small pieces and they ultimately get absorbed into the soil layer, into the land layers. But if you um, throw certain garbage, like plastic garbage, they're not getting degenerated, okay? So you must have come across certain landfills, certain garbage areas where, so for example, you have some organic matter like banana peel or like uh, other vegetable peels that after some time will rot, will get consumed into the soil layer. Okay, but then uh, you uh, must have come across certain landfills, certain garbage areas where there are huge, uh, huge heaps of uh, huge piles of plastic bags, garbage bags, and they're lying there over you. You visit there after day ten, you visit there after day twenty. Those plastics are just like that. But if you play, uh, but if you observe a banana peel or other organic waste, and if you come again to that specific area, say after day ten, after day twenty, you will see that that is getting degenerated means it is getting broken up into smaller and smaller pieces and this consumed inside the soil layer. But that is not the thing when you talk of plastic because plastic does not get degenerated. Okay, so when you have uh, to think of plastic, uh, uh, the, this is a non biodegradable item. Okay, so biodegradable items means those items that are getting degraded, that are getting decomposed, that are getting degenerated or that are getting broken up into smaller pieces. Okay, breaking up into smaller parts. Okay, means degrading. And those items that are not breaking up into smaller parts means they are not degrading, they are non biodegradable. So, plastic is a non biodegradable substance, and therefore, that whenever you visit a restaurant, you can see here there is a plastic bag, a plastic spoon, a plastic fork, you have to say no. If you, ha if you have uh, uh, an access to steel, uh, uh, utensils or if you have an access to even wooden utensils you can say no to plastics okay and you can you can instead opt for paper bags like you can see here in the picture or you can take your own bag that is made up of jute or that is made up of cloth so that you can uh, reduce the use of plastic okay if you, or if you have certain plastics that that uh, instead of wasting it you can reuse it again or here you have a certain clothes that instead of wasting it you're reusing those clothes again and again okay and then in the third picture, you have that this person is throwing the plastic bottle in a garbage where you have this cycle, you, where you have this image, okay? This image is basically of recycling, all right? This image symbolizes recycling. So this person is throwing this plastic bottle in a garbage can that has this recycling sign. Means all those items in that garbage can will go into recycling, all right? So... By reducing the consumption, by being aware of what product you're using, by being aware of the quantity of the product that you're using, and again, by recycling and reusing things, we can ensure that we are conserving our resources. And why is conservation important? Conservation is important because every item around us, every resource around us, they are limited in nature. With this, we have also seen in the case of renewable natural resources that even the water is a renewable resource, Soil is a renewable resource, forest is a renewable resource. Due to extensive and exploitative use, these resources are getting depleted from our earth and we need to ensure that we are using it in a very vigilant manner. All right. This brings us to our next topic that is sustainable development. Now, what do we mean by this term sustainable development? We mean that the use of resources, okay, the conservative use of resources or the, you can say the uh, balanced use of resources so that uh, the kind of natural resources that we have is also available uh, for the use of the next generation. If you may ask your parents and if you, if you may ask them that what were uh, the situation of uh, uh, availability of water in your times, so they, may, they, they may say that water in our times was very readily available for use. But now you may witness certain people in certain areas, they, they are dying due, due to the scarcity of water or also due to the contamination of water. In earlier times, there, there, was, not, uh, there was not a very, uh, you can say, increase in, in either contamination or in the scarcity of water. But today we have it. 
right so that means somewhere or the other that balance of resources is not happening that sustainability means the way you are using so that the other the people that come after you they may also use it in a very efficient manner that efficiency is getting disturbed okay so when we are talking about sustainable development we have to think about conservation of resources and we have to think about the balancing of the use of resources so that now for example whatever uh, quantity of uh, natural resources you have around us okay the people who will come after me or the people who will come after you okay they also have the access uh, they also have uh, you can say the exposure to use all these resources in a very efficient manner or if not efficient then in a very you can say balanced manner all right we uh, there is air pollution around us there is water pollution around us so we are already uh, in that battle we have entered into that battle where we have to think of using our resources in a very uh, in a very balanced and a rational manner okay so we are already into that path where we are fighting against uh, this uh, fighting for the sustainable development and fighting against exhaustion complete exhaustion or irrational use of materials all right so the next important point is that we have to be very uh, observant okay of uh, for other forms of life so we have to respect and care for all forms of life we don't have to be selfish again uh, by, by the generational example if you are using certain a uh, quantity that is available to you you may think that oh i have water i have availability of good food good water so it does not matter whether the people are getting or not because i am getting it so i will not turn off the tap uh, i will not uh, you know uh, uh, give the leftover food to other people okay who may who may want it rather i will waste it that is the very selfish take on life that is uh, means you are not taking into consideration about those other people who are not getting access to all these items due to whatever reason but the thing is that they are not getting the access right so the important point is that you have to respect and care for all forms of life even animals there are certain stray dogs certain stray even cattle even cats okay that are not getting food that are dying because either they are they are not adopted or they are left by the parents uh, parents i mean uh, the the people who adopt them all right so you have to be even uh, uh, respectful and considerate of those if if you have left over food you you can give it uh, to those animals right if you have a uh, water extra water you can give it uh, to those animals all right so that there is um, an surety that uh, all the creatures are uh, on earth be it human be it animals we are getting all the resources in a very equal manner so we have to conserve the earth's vitality and earth's diversity we have to think of everybody around okay then sustainable development aims to minimize the depletion of natural resources so while i have was discussing with you the point of conservation of resources we have already established this, this fact that even though uh, there are renewable uh, resources such as water okay uh, such as soil such as forest we know that a constant use of these items are making these items very very um, very very you, you can say uh, they are very available less and less available for us to use okay so the next important thing that we can uh, do for uh, a sustainable development for the maintenance of the sustainable development is that we can minimize the, the depletion of natural resources means again going back to that uh, conservation or the reservation point that we have to ensure that we are not needlessly wasting these resources we have to be very uh, attentive towards our uses the quantity that we are using to these resources so we can do it by changing our personal attitudes our practices and by caring for our environment so we have seen that we have to care for uh, the future generations we have to ensure that what quantity we are using uh, all those resources it is also available for others to use then also again the same next point that we have to be respectful and careful to all other forms of life not just humans but also animals okay not just uh, 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 people like us who are uh, privileged enough to get uh, good food good clothes good water but also respectful to those people who are not getting them how by sharing some part of us uh, some part of our material to them by ensuring that we are not wasting any other any resources that we may be using and of course the third is that we have to minimize we have to be vigilant we have to be careful so that we are reducing the consumption of natural resources okay then important point to remember here in the sustainable development part is that the future of our planet and its people is interlinked all of us 
we are interdependent nobody can say that i am self sufficient i can procure all my food i can also ensure that i have clean drinking air water and everything no we are dependent in a cycle or we can say in a chain that we are uh, we have to think of the other person that is coming after us and the people who are coming before us okay so the people who are there who are laboring so that we can get a uh, uh, good food uh, people who are laboring in the farms the, the farmer okay and the other imp important people employed in the specific industry where, where the dirty water is getting purified we have to think of everybody because the future of a planet depends on how we are utilizing our resources the preservation of this life support system is very very important it is very very crucial therefore summing up it is our duty to ensure that we use renewable resources carefully we are thinking of everybody we are thinking about of all the creatures that are there on earth uh, that means we are thinking about the diversity of life on earth and we are also uh, reducing the consumption that means we are minimizing the damage to the environment overuse or exploitation means um, depleting the natural resources depleting or you can say even wasting some resources that may have been used by other people that will come after us or even before us okay so by reducing the use by uh be, being vigilant or by or by balancing the use of natural resources we can minimize the damage done to the environment so all of these points they come under this domain of sustainable development means the kind of development that ensures that everybody around us in the present and everybody around us in the future not just humans but also other forms of creature can enjoy the different resources that we are getting from nature be it the natural resources and in the case of humans the man made resources as well okay now we'll be looking up uh, two questions and then we'll be summing up the chapter why are resources distributed unequally over the earth so we have seen that uh, there are three important factors that depend uh, where resource is uh, situated or prevalent okay so this is the first thing is the terrain or you can also say uh, the 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 kind of land where whether it is a dry land whether it is a, a mountain region whether it is a flat land whether it is a plateau or whether it, whether it is an area where the climate is very cold or very hot so the climate is the next factor okay then altitude so whether it is located at a very high uh, at at a very you know uh, high altitude means uh, you you can say at at a very increase in height okay and low altitude means low lying plains so mountain areas they are located uh, on high altitude and flats they are located in um, low altitude okay so uh, the distribution of resources they are uh, the distribution is unequal over the earth because of uh, the because the earth the distribution or you can say rather uh, the composition of the earth's land the earth's terrain then the climate that we have on earth and the different altitude the places different places have different altitude so all these ensure that certain resources are available at a certain area only for example coconuts can be available in the coastal areas but they may not be available in other areas for example the sundarbans okay so you have to uh, when you are thinking about resources you have to take all of these three factors into your mind the kind of land uh, or the kind of uh, terrain that is there okay and uh, and also the kind of climate that is there in a particular area and the kind of altitude that we are talking about a high altitude or a low altitude okay next up why are human resources important human resources are important and we have seen this because of the different abilities that we humans are contributing right uh, these abilities could be mental and these abilities could also be physical in nature okay um wait. yes so when we are talking about human resources we have to think about all those abstract qualities okay that we human possess that uh, uh, that are ultimately making up for uh, uh, the convenience of certain items uh, for available for our use okay so when we are uh, thinking of uh, say different ideologies different inventions different discoveries so here there is the employment of mental abilities okay and when we are thinking of industrial the the uh, use of the various machineries okay or man made labor 
okay so we are thinking of physical uses so the quantity uh, of people uh, that also matters the, the uh, how many people that are involved in a specific area that are thinking of different ideas new ideas different inventions different discoveries and the quantity of people that are involved in in you know the proper functioning of different machines or proper functioning management of different people overlooking different people who are working uh, uh, via their you know own uh, handmade skills man made skills okay so human resources are important because they ensure that uh the availability of certain resources be it natural resources or be it man made resources that is available for our use in a more efficient manner in a more convenient manner so again did that example that I given you in the beginning of the chapter of iron ore so we do not get iron directly from the iron ore we have to there there are a certain processes there are certain you know different chemical reactions that this ore is subjected to okay and along with iron we are getting various other metals as well okay so uh, we have to incorporate human resources over here we have to incorporate certain uh, you know important mental abilities that have uh, that that you know is uh, that will be required uh, okay that will be required for this iron ore to subject to some certain chemical reactions and then also physical labor so that the extraction of iron is made possible from that or along with other metals so human resources are important therefore uh because they are uh, helping okay they are helping us to access the different resources be it natural or be it man made in a much more convenient manner so here it is we have come towards the end of this chapter and um i'll be discussing about uh, uh, a recapitulation of this chapter in the next part that is a quick revision till now you have learned about the definition of resource we have seen the different kinds of resources natural resources man made resources and even human resources we have also gone through the idea of sustainable development and we have seen that why is it important to conserve the resources and to conserve uh, the, the resources uh, natural resources man made resources everything be it renewable or be non renewable around us the balance is very very important so i'll be seeing you in the next part of this uh, chapter where i'll be discussing with you um a quick recapitulation of this chapter